Folks, let's take a look at three different series of HLA snow pushers. It's a really common question on what's the difference between a 1500, an 1800, and a 2500. Hopefully this side view gives you a good visual, all right? Up front here, furthest away is a 1500, then the 1800 in the middle, 2500 over there. They're gonna get taller and they're gonna get deeper, all right? So just look at the height, the overall height on the side or on the mold board, all right? And they get deeper this way as well. And so what that means is two things, all right? It's gonna weigh more, right? The taller it is, the deeper it is, that means there's more steel involved. But then it's also going to trap more snow. And so without any context, that seems like that's a good thing. However, snow is heavy and you need a lot of weight and traction to push snow. I am pretty conservative on my recommendations, but making the same recommendations for years, you'll see some folks out there that are like, oh, I can run a giant snow pusher on my 1025R, you know? And there's always exceptions to the rule, but that's not most of us, all right? And so I'm gonna set you up for success. If you don't know what size pusher to get, I'm happy to make a recommendation for you. Now, so in general, my rule of thumb is gonna be based on the tractor width and the tractor weight, all right? So typically within any series of tractor, all the horsepowers are going to work with the snow pushers. That's not really gonna determine what size of pusher you get so much versus how much that tractor weighs and always consider, well, I would say it's a necessity to always add ballast weight, to have wheel weights, to have liquid ballast, to have three point weight, as much as you can to put all the power possible to the ground through those rear tires so you can push that snow where you need to go. So let's just take the, uh, the 1025R for example. We could use any tractor, it doesn't really matter, but it's the same kind of concept. I'm going to recommend a pusher that's either the width of the tractor or slightly wider. And in this case, it's a 48 inch tractor. 54 inch actually happens to be the smallest or the narrowest uh, snow pusher that HLA offers. Turns out it's a great fit. 54 inch snow pusher gives you a few extra inches on either side. So when you're moving along, you know how snow, even if you're just using the shovel, it kind of tends to spill in a little bit. Um, it's nice to have a few extra inches further away from the tires so you're not driving over the snow when it kind of just spills in just a little bit on either edge. So either match up at the bare minimum, match up with the width of your tractor, or go just a, a few inches wider, you know, maybe three inches wider on either side or six inches wider on either side at an absolute max. A common question is why would I use a 1,572 inch and not an 1,872 inch? And again, that gets back to the weight of the pusher and the weight of the trap snow, there's a big difference in that weight. Um, you're combining it, okay? Because like a snow plow, for example, when it's angled, you're constantly pushing that load off to the side, all right? Or with a snow blower, it's ejecting the snow. With a pusher, it's collecting it, building it, and trapping it, and moving it to where you wanna go. And so that, that uh, resistance is only going to increase the further that you push along. And so that's where the conservative recommendations come into play. There's nothing worse, okay? I've, I've experimented with all sorts of setups and there's nothing worse than having too big of a pusher on here. You're gonna sit there and spin your wheels at a certain point. You're not gonna be able to turn your machine because you have just too much weight up here that's just kind of almost like an anchor and not allowing you to, to steer where you need to go. So you guys let me know. I mean, I, we sold a ton and just an absolute boatload of snow pushers. If I've made a wrong recommendation or you wish you would have got a different size, I'd, I'd love to know. It'll make me smarter and help me to have better recommendations in the future. Fortunately, I do not get that kind of feedback. I really try to, well, again, I mean, I've, I've narrowed it in over the years and I, 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 I am confident I'm giving you the right options for your tractor. I love snow pushers for a lot of reasons. They're great for just doing a little clean up work, even if you have two inches, you don't want to drive over it, you want to get out there, clean it off. But if you get 12 inches, you can tackle that with these two. If it's the light fluffy stuff, if it's the wet heavy stuff, it doesn't matter what it is. It's all gonna trap in here, unlike a blower that can clog up. We had that clogging issue last year with, uh, with our MK Martin, but they're just good for all that kind of stuff. And you can stack with these, all right? You just kind of push into your pile and stack up on there. Unlike a bucket that has a bottom edge, you don't have to worry about that catching corners on your concrete or digging down in and gouging things and causing damage to not only the surface you're plowing, but also to the bucket itself. And then you don't have to worry about rocking that thing to try to knock out all the snow that's built up in there. And they're just easy to use, right? You just put it on, 
your quick hitch. All you do is mount it to your quick hitch. There's no electrical or other hydraulic connections that are needed, so it's super simple. There's very little that's gonna go wrong, which again, if you're working in the cold, your fingers aren't working well, it's normally dark out there. It's just not a comfortable environment to be working in, so if you can have simplicity working in your favor, I mean, you're gonna get the, get the job done that much quicker, more consistently, and get back inside where it's a little bit warmer. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Okay, so another big difference. Well, the 1500 and the 1800 share a very similar, actually the same back drag, which fully encloses the top. Okay, so you can see uh, it's this hunk of steel that's bolted on. You can see the bolts here. And that's the nice thing about HLA construction, the frame bolts on. So if you have a John Deere quick attach, but you sell it, sell it and get a, something with a skid steer quick attach, you can just get a new frame. You don't have to get a whole new snow pusher. The back drags bolt on like this. So if you don't need one now, or maybe you want to see how it goes without it and then add it on down the road, you can, it just bolts right on. Same thing with the edges uh, and the runners here. If you wear down through them, you can replace them. If you get a new driveway surface, you can replace them. The edges actually flip over so you can get double the life out of those two. Just a lot of great common sense features about these. Um, and everything's built robust, all right? Uh, these things are, are stout, to say the least. They are not going to... I have yet to ever, 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 ever have a single warranty claim on an HLA snow pusher. I mean, they are built like absolute tanks. So um, getting back to the back drag though, this one fully encloses the top. As you can see, there's no gaps in there anywhere. So there's nowhere for that snow to go. Unlike the competition, which very common is gonna be a strip that's about right down here, okay? It's gonna be four to six inches wide, depending on the manufacturer, just going right across. And then this whole area here is all an open gap for snow just to spill over doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, I, it's cheaper, don't get me wrong, but it almost serves no purpose in my mind because that snow will build up above four to six inches in no time at all. So we get over to the 2500, and this is where you see a gap, all right? The actual size of the back drag coverage is the same as the smaller units, but you get to a point, and I think I'm hy hypothesizing right now uh, for the reasons I think HLA did this, number one, it would be so heavy if you put, well, double the steel, maybe more than double the steel to fill this gap. And then that would be so incredibly expensive as well. And so you still have about a foot of coverage here, maybe a little bit more. And so it's a ton of area for that snow to build up and drag it along. And you will actually see, and, and I think we've got a, an older video where it'll stick up above here and we don't get a lot of spillage. Um, probably depends on the kind of snow. If it's kind of the stickier, wetter snow, it kind of clumps together, together a little bit. Um, but that is going to be a difference that you see on the 2500 is there will start to be a gap here. You have the big support bar going across and all that kind of thing too. Okay, so let's talk about edges and runners, your options there. You have steel, uh, rubber, or UHMW for, for your edges, okay, for on, on the main pusher box and even on the back drag. And so what you're going to see is everything's pre-drilled, okay? So you can just bolt those on, they're interchangeable, very nice. And even the back drag is pre-drilled as well, all right? And so this is a, you can see how it's welded on. This is a, a permanent edge that is welded in place, all right? And so if you're gonna stick with steel all around, I wouldn't worry, unless you're doing it commercially, I wouldn't worry about getting a replacement or replaceable steel edge on the back drag. This is a thick hunk of steel here. and. By the time you wore it all the way down to these bolt holes, you would know, right? You got, you got a lot of use out of this uh, back drag before you see it wearing down to those bolt holes. And then at that point, if you ever got to that point, you could put on a replaceable edge and make sure you didn't eat into those bolt holes there. But um, otherwise, they come standard with this integrated edge, and you have the option to put on your replaceable edges if you want to. I'm going to mention this because it's a, a common setup. The guys have a long gravel driveway or, or millings or something else, but they have a concrete pad up by their garage or their barn. Get steel on the main edge and get steel runners. So you're on your gravel, you're just kind of using that for the majority of the work. But then up by, up by the garage or the barn, 
get UHMW or rubber on the back drag so you can just back drag and pull that snow away off your concrete pad and protect that. It's a really common setup, a popular one, so I want to mention it. And so here's an, a look at one that we have outfitted all the way with UHMW all around. All right, we have UHMW on both of the scraping edges, UHMW skid runners as well. And we went about as thick as you'll see it, okay? They make it thicker. They make it as thick as you want, the UHMW, but this is over the top. Um, if you compare this to what everybody else is selling, ours is way thicker, all right? I wanted to go the heaviest duty, give you the best bang for the buck, but just give you the most longevity and durability for your money too. And it's an inch and a quarter thick of UHMW here. And the runners themselves are an inch and a half thick. So a lot of life out of there. And you'll see the runners are slotted. And whether they're steel or UHMW, they're going to be slotted. And so as they wear down, you can get some adjustment out of there. And if you want to raise your main cutting edge off the ground, you can also do so um, by controlling the, the depth of the slots that are on the skid runners. All right, so let's hit on some key points about HLA's design. And I think, oh, if I can get bent down here, looking inside this, it's completely open. And one of the huge differences between the HLA pushers and the competition is you're not gonna see the cross bracing that goes from the side panel to the back plate. And that's put in most of the pushers to provide extra rigidity and support. But what you can see, hopefully it shows up, is there's a double wall panel. It's a, a thick panel that's welded in place here, and this is how they get the extra uh, rigidity out of there. And so it means that you have the strength you need, so it's not gonna fall apart or anything or get out of squared, out of alignment, but there's no cross bracing to trap snow in both corners. That's super common and super annoying, right? I mean, the one job of a snow pusher is to put the snow where you want it, not to carry it along forever. And so without those, the cross braces in there, you don't have to worry about it. The other feature is gonna be that rolled or that radius back that's in there. And what that does is a couple of things. It keeps the snow rolling forward and releasing. And so as you're moving along, it's making it a little bit easier on your tractor as it's kind of just constantly rolling forward and moving along. And then it's also helping it to not stick there and stay in place where you want it to be. We've already hit on some of the other features as far as the bolt together design, which I can't, overstate, I don't think, because it just gives so much flexibility for the operator down the road. Uh, we do carry black only. We used to carry green. Uh, we can special order green, orange, blue, red, construction yellow, all that kind of stuff. But black just kind of goes along with everything, allows us to fulfill as many orders as we possibly can. Because again, when you place your order and it could be one of hundreds of combinations, depending on the size and the edges and the mount and all that kind of stuff, we can just fulfill it. We just bolt it all together the way that you need it, and then we ship it on out. So HLA is made in Canada, all right? And their sister company, MK Martin, makes the snow blowers. We sell a ton of pull-type blowers, and it's a really common setup. You get a pusher on the front, blower on the back. But either way, we're getting these from companies that know a little bit about snow, so you can rest assured they are building an extremely well-built, well-thought-out product. And it's, in my opinion, one of those products that if I can just point out what I like about it, I think it sells itself. You're welcome. It, it's not gonna be the cheapest one out there. So you're welcome to go buy a Frontier or a Land Pride or some of the others that are on the market. If you are gonna have a pusher for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, if you're paying a few hundred extra dollars up front, spread that cost out. If it's 10 years, that's like 30 bucks a year, right? If it's 30 years, that's 10 bucks a year extra that you're paying. So to have a superior product, I think it's worth it, in my opinion. You buy once, you cry once, as they say. But anyway, we'd love to earn your business. If you do have any questions on what the right setup is for you, send us an email. I'll set you up with the right size pusher, get you fixed up. We ship all over the country every day of the week. Go to goodworkstractors.com to see what we have to offer. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.